let's take a look at this example here. We want to rewrite the following numbers as a quotient of integers. Remember, quotient just means a fraction where the numerator is an integer, denominator is an integer. So let's take a look at part A, 1.65. The wise tip that I have for you here is whenever you want to convert a decimal to a fraction, you're going to count the number of decimal places. This guy has two decimal places. Okay, then what I need to do is multiply this by a number that has two zeros, and the cleanest one is 100. Okay, so a lot of students get confused here. They're like, how did you pick 100, Jess? Well, there are two decimal places, so I need two zeros, so that's 100. Now, obviously, I can't just multiply by 100, then I'm changing the question. So I'm going to multiply by 100 divided by 100. Well, essentially, anything divided by itself is just 1, and I'm allowed to multiply a number by 1, it's still the same number, right? I'm not changing the question here. This is still 1.65. But once I've done that, now I have this fraction. The bottom is just going to be the 100. The top, I'm going to use a little trick here. Whenever you're multiplying decimals with 10, 100, thousands, multiples of 10, you're going to trade every decimal place for a 0. So I could technically move this decimal place one spot. That gets rid of one of the zeros. Move the decimal place another spot. That gets rid of another 0. So now, my answer in the top is just 165. So this is a quotient of integers, that's it. That's a rational number. Now, of course, whenever we see fraction, it gets a little bit more annoying. You want to simplify as much as possible. Well, I can divide the numerator by 5 and the denominator by 5 as well, because 5 goes into both numbers. And if I do that, we end up with 33 over 20. Now, this is the simplified form of the rational number. Okay, part B, we have negative 5. Not a decimal, so what do we do? Do we multiply by 10, 100? No, just multiply by 1 over 1, okay? Because there's no decimal, so I don't need any zeros. So if I do that, I get a fraction over 1, and my numerator is just negative 5. So this is the rational number, which is a fraction with integers. Now, wise tip for you. A lot of times when you see the number, let's say, negative 5 over 1, that is the exact same number as 5 over negative 1. So this negative sign can kind of float around. It can go on the top, it can go on the bottom. But more commonly, you're going to see the negative out front, and you're going to see the fraction like that. So the negative sign, for the most part, will show up in front of the fraction. All right, part C, I have a decimal here. And again, you're going to count the number of decimal places. One, two, three. So give this question a try, multiply it by some number over some number, and see if you can rewrite it as a quotient of numbers. So hopefully you multiplied by 1,000 because there's three decimal places, we need three zeros. All right, since it's a negative, I'm going to just write the negative out front. In the denominator, I have 1,000. In the numerator, I'm just going to trade one decimal place for one zero, another decimal place for another zero, and so on. So in the numerator, I'm en I end up with 0, 3, 0, 2. Obviously, that 0 in the front we normally don't write, so it's just 302. And from here, you can simplify this by dividing top and bottom, let's say, by 2. In the numerator, you end up with 151. In the denominator, you end up with 500. And this, my friends, is the rational number uh, that is the same as negative 0.302. Okay, part D, we have another negative uh, decimal. This time we have four decimal places. So guess what? We're going to multiply top and bottom by a number with the four zeros. So that's going to be 10,000. All right, it's a negative number. Put the negative in front. It's a fraction. The bottom doesn't change. The top, I'm just going to trade zeros for decimal places. So pretend that this number doesn't have any decimals. Well, numbers don't start with zeros, right? Whole numbers don't start with zeros. So I'm just going to cancel out all the zeros, and I'm just left with 13. There's nothing I can simplify because there's no number that goes into both 13 and 10,000. So this is the rational number. Finally, part E, I have the number zero. This is a little tricky. Well, what did we do with the number negative 5? That was an integer. I just multiplied by 1 over 1. That's the exact same thing I'm going to do here. So I end up with 0 over 1 which is a quotient of numbers that is the exact same as zero. Now, if your friend is doing this question, they might have decided to multiply by two over two, which is allowed, or 10 over 10, or five over five. So technically, zero can be rewritten as zero over any integer, 
that is non-zero. Of course, we can't divide by zero, right? So zero is the same as zero over any non-zero integer. Hey guys, my name is Jess, the head of education here at WISE. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. If you wanna see the complete course, please check out the link in the description. You can also go to one of our playlists to keep learning for free. If you want us to cover a specific course or a specific topic, please leave us a comment below. We post new videos every week, so don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the new stuff.